Hey, today I'm here taking a look at the 8th Doctor figure from Night of the Doctor. This recently been released in Toys R Us. Um, now this is really difficult to find. Um, every other figure in the wave, they had loads of them on the shelves, but when I got there this was the last one left. And the only reason they had this one left is because I'd actually phoned the store in advance and uh, told them to keep one back for me. I'd also done the whole um, click and collect thing on their website where you can uh, kind of get them to reserve one for you. But that seems to be totally pointless because I did that and I got a confirmation and everything that they'd reserved it for me. Then a few hours later they messaged me saying that they'd sold out so it was no longer reserved for me which kind of defeats the whole object of it being reserved. So if you know that your local Toys R Us has one of these, ring them up and get someone in person speaking on the phone to hold one back for you. Otherwise I'd have been really disappointed and not got this. Anyway, have a little look at the box first. Got Doctor Who written along the top there. Window box, so you have the figure in there. You've got the chalice one side and his sonic screwdriver the other. On the back of the box, there's a picture of the figure and then a brief history of him on film, which is basically two episodes the, the original one he was in and then the six minute regeneration scene, uh, The Night of the Doctor, which is what this figure's based on. And then once we get the figure out of the box here, you see he's uh, really nicely detailed. He's got a green jacket, which um, the original figure that they released of him had more of a sort of almost a bluey jacket, but it's, it was always green. And the newer jacket is too. Um, he's got this kind of bronze waistcoat underneath. I'll try and get an up close shot if I can get it to focus that close. You can see there's a chain there from a fob watch going behind his jacket, silver buckle on the belt, some nice sort of creasing and shading on the bronze waistcoat. He's got his blue neckerchief, the white collar out the top there, white cuffs sticking out the end of his jacket there, brown kind of dirty looking trousers, leather boots which are nicely painted, got some nice detail on them to make them look a bit scuffed and a bit, you know, give them a bit more texture. Now articulation wise, the arms go out to the side, like so. He's got the bicep swivels, which I always hate because I just think it breaks up the sculpt, but there's not really any other way you can put the the articulate swivel in unless they maybe put it closer to the shoulder. He also got the, the bends at the elbows, his wrist swivel, his head swivels all the way round if you wanted to. Legs go up down to the side. They've got the thigh cuts, which I feel kind of the same way about as I do the bicep cuts. And then there's also a cut there at the top of the boot, which I find handy. And really with that, I don't think you need the thigh cut necessarily. Um, he swivels at the waist too. Now, if you have his feet both facing completely forward, he does seem to have one leg slightly longer than the other, which I thought was kind of funny, as uh, the original figure had one leg slightly longer than the other. Um, as you see there, if I put him flat on his left foot, I don't know if you can see that really, but it just shows where he has got that right leg is slightly shorter. It's, it's not a big deal, it's nowhere near as bad as it was on the uh, original figure that was released of him, where the, the leg kept slipping out slightly of the joint and making it a lot longer. But I just I, I don't know if Paul McGann maybe has one leg longer than the other and they're just being really slavish to detail, and that's why they insist on making these figures a bit lopsided, but I think it's more likely to be a production error. Now, accessories wise, he has his sonic screwdriver, which is based on the classic kind of sonic screwdriver design. It's quite nicely, there's more uh, sculpting detail in it than in the one that came with the original 8th Doctor figure. And he's also got a bit of paint detail there with the red light on the top, which the, uh, the original figure didn't have either on. He also comes with this bandolier, oops, which um, 
you can fit and actually it's on him when you get him and I took it off because um, he only has this at the end of the Night of the Doctor episode but by the time he puts the bandolier on he'd already regenerated into a young John Hurt so it's kind of an odd accessory to have with him because he never has that while he is the Paul McGann Eighth Doctor. Um, now I'm not sure if the head is removable or not, I did give it a bit of a try but it seemed quite tight on there so I didn't want to risk it breaking. But even if the head is removable and you could swap it with the War Doctor's head, it still wouldn't be accurate because we had the, uh, you know, kind of 1975 looking John Hurt when he first regenerates before he got older. So he still wouldn't have had that bandolier on there, so it's uh, kind of a pointless accessory. Um, if you wanted to, you could take the bandolier off of Paul and put onto the John Hurt figure. But I don't think it really looks right, especially as he already has the bandolier underneath his jacket anyway. But I'll just put it on him to show you what it looks like, just in case anyone has been curious. Let's see, it doesn't look too bad, but I think it looks a bit awkward on him because of the, the size of his jacket and that, it just doesn't fit as comfortably as it does on the Paul McGann figure. And then he also has this chalice, which he drank out of to prompt his regeneration from the Sisterhood of Khan in the uh, Night of the Doctor episode, so that's a nice accessory to have. He doesn't really need anything else. Let's look at the back of the figure there. You can see a bit more detailing on the jacket, the creases, seams, the buttons and things. Now, one thing that's strange about mine, and I think it's just a production error on mine, I don't think all the figures are like this, is that this arm kind of sticks outwards as if he's got his shoulder swept back. Um, now, I think it's just on my one that the cut in the ball joint, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera really, has been put slightly askew in the wrong place. So it's making his arm constantly stick out to the side, so if I want him to have his arm kind of facing forward, I have to have that cut in the sculpt there to get it facing forward. But as I say, I don't, I don't think that's going to be like that on every figure, I think it's just mine somehow in production had the cut put in the wrong place on the shoulder slightly. But other than that, he's a really nice figure. It's um, a more accurate likeness to Paul McGann than the original figure, which I have here. You can see he's a slightly taller as well. But I like both designs. I, I like both outfits. And um, I've always been a fan of the, the Eighth Doctor. He's actually one of my favourites. Um, even though I wasn't all that keen on the 96 TV movie, I thought Paul McGann did a great job in it. And uh, it, was, it was great seeing him again in Night of the Doctor 2. I really wish they would include him more in the new series you know have maybe in just a regular episode have him ma make an appearance in a crossover um meeting peter capaldi's doctor or something because he really deserves more screen time I was, I was kind of disappointed he didn't turn out to be the war doctor I, I think many people as well as me had assumed he was the doctor during the time war um so e even if they did just a web series of 10 minute episodes um, just to see him come up against the Daleks and Davros and the Master and that and the Cybermen, it's, it's, I think he deserves it. And it'd be nice to see it while Paul McGann still looks young enough to pull it off. Um, but the, the audio dramas he does are really good as well, so I'd recommend them too. Uh, but it's, it's great to have another figure of him in another costume. And it's a, a more dynamic costume. The first costume, uh, it was more of a kind of gentleman's outfit. Now he looks more like an adventurer. But at the same time, it is still a very similar outfit. There's still the waistcoat and the long jacket and the neckerchief and that. But he's got the, you know, his longer boots rather than shoes and whatnot. So uh, I'd recommend getting it. It was £15. Um, and normally Doctor Who figures, these collector's figures, go up in price quite quickly on the secondary market, on eBay and whatnot. So try and get him as, as soon as you can. Um, I don't know if they produced less of him and that's why there weren't as many of him in the store or if it's because he sold out because he's more popular. It may well be that they produced less of him because he was he's probably the, the less well known of all the characters in the, the recent wave because he hasn't actually been in the, the, the TV show on TV just in this six minute episode that maybe a lot of casual fans or kids didn't even watch. They wouldn't have a clue who he is. Um, but yeah, he's a really nice figure. I'm really glad I got him. 
So thanks for watching.